how do I pray? This question is essential for living the Christian life. This question is, in some sense, essential for being human. To be human in some way is to pray. Our very being stretches forth to recognize that there is something greater than ourselves, a purpose greater than ourselves, that we are part of something greater than ourselves, and we stretch forth to encounter that. That voice already within us, speaking in our conscience, takes on shape through Christian revelation as God himself has revealed to us who he is. And in fact, as Jesus then responds to the apostles, we can think of him as Father. He is a Father, and we have some experience of fatherhood. Hopefully, personally, a good experience of fatherhood, a Father who cared for us, provided for us, a Father who loved us and was there for us, and continues to be, God willing. Jesus says, when you pray, say, Father, who are in heaven. And in this way, he is giving us a shape of Christian prayer. And he's giving us some indication of what Christian prayer looks like. He's teaching us that it's relational. Christian prayer is relational. It's relating to a father. It's not just a matter of saying prayers, not just a matter of doing some kind of thing in order to satisfy a deity but it is really learning to respond to that voice that is already at work within us, that voice of conscience, as John Henry Newman describes so beautifully for us, that voice that, that speaks from deep within us, but that we don't know, we don't have a face and a name for until we come to know Jesus Christ, and then as he introduces us to the Father. So again, how do we pray? We pray relationally, we, we relate with a father with persons. It's really surprising. The philosophers might not have guessed that God could have a personal relationship with us, understanding God as being, understanding God as goodness or as uh, the, the consummation of beauty. But God, understanding God as a person and that we can have a personal relationship with him. So this gives the shape to Christian prayer. And then, just to make it very concrete for us, how do I pray? Jesus says, when you pray, say, Father. And so we can make that our starting point, just taking a little bit of time. And because our communication with God is interior and it's a little bit obscure and it works best then in quiet when we can really give some space away from the, the noise because our, our prayer happens at a spiritual level. The sensory level, as we take things in through our eyes and through our hands, through our ears, uh, that sensory level is, is, is loud and, and compelling and it, it presses upon us in some way and, and uh, it's hard to not respond to that. And so that's why it's important for us to take some, some time apart, some space apart, and clear out some of those sensory distractions so that we can get an inter internal traction with God. Because that communication with God is at a spiritual level. Jesus says, the time will come when worship or worshipers will worship me in spirit and in truth. And God is spirit. And so we connect with him, we get traction, we, we speak with him and relate with him in a spiritual way, a purely spiritual way. And so taking some time apart, turning the lights out, closing the door, or turning the lights on low perhaps, we don't need to immerse ourselves in darkness, turning the noise off, the televisions and radios, putting the iPhone on do not disturb or silencing, turning off those electronic devices, that we would just give ourselves some space. And then we can just use that first word that Jesus gives us and we can start to relate with a father. Father, he says, Jesus says, when you pray, say, Father, who are in heaven, Father. And, and we can just take that simple word and as we say, Father, 
What's coming to our mind? What's starting to fill us? What images do we get? Now, there may be some difficult images. Maybe your relationship with your own father was more turbulent or you experienced his his anger. Maybe there was something fearful or controlling there. And, and so then we need to replace that in some way. What's the most beautiful image of a father you've ever seen? And maybe it's from a movie. Maybe it's from your friend's father. But to try and fix in our minds the image of a loving father. Father who wants to be with us. A father who wants to pay attention to us. We can fix that image of a loving father. I invite you even just to do this right now. Just be with me in this. Maybe you can close your eyes. At least quiet some of the other distractions. You can always pause this to close the door, turn other interferences off, and just enter into this space with me. Pray, Father. Father. What's that loving image of the Father like for you? Father, who are in heaven, my Father in heaven, my Father who has given me life, my Father who desired that I exist, my Father who created me out of nothing, my Father who looks on me with love. Can you enter into the presence of a father like that? Can you enter into the presence of a father who loves you? Can you enter into the presence of a father who desired you to exist, who intended for you to exist, who created you out of nothing and delights in you, delights in your existence? Can you enter into the presence of that father? It's a first step of prayer. Make it very concrete. Maybe you can imagine a face, a smile, a strong face. And there's something about the identification with the masculine face. Father, my Father, my Father who are in heaven, but then also a tender embrace. My Father who gathers me up, holds me close to himself. My Father who will keep me safe. Holds my heart next to his, my father. This is giving us a sense of the father that Jesus communed with. And the apostles, when they saw him going off to pray, they wondered because there was something about the way that he prayed when they saw him pray. It's another way that we can imagine ourselves if we have a hard time thinking that the father wants to draw close to us, embrace us, be with us. If we imagine that the Father wants to embrace us, but we can, we can imagine the interaction of Jesus and the Father. If we, if we can't imagine the Father wanting to look at us, at least maybe we can imagine him looking at Jesus and Jesus looking at him. And we can start there, but then we want to step into the place of Jesus because the Father looks at us like he looks at his own son. Maybe you feel ashamed because of things you've done, or maybe you feel like you haven't earned the Father's love. It's not something that we earn. It's a love that he has for us freely. A loving Father. So I invite you to just continue to pray from that place. Just using those first words from Jesus in Luke 11, verse 1, when the apostles say to him what we also can say to him, even if we've been at it for many years, we can still feel like beginners. I still pray this way. Lord, teach me to pray. Lord, teach me to pray. And it's a good starting point. Just ask him. He wants to. He wants to relate with you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to be close to you. So just starting right there. Lord, teach me to pray. And then... Starting with the words of Jesus, Father, my Father, and allowing ourselves to be in his presence beneath his gaze, allow him to look upon you, and just stay there. If you can stay there for an hour, stay there for an hour. 
If you stay there for five minutes, stay there for five minutes. Just keep placing yourself in the loving presence of the Father. And we can finish by just praying the full prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.